LasVegasTrafficCameras.com. 1725 Cameras. Access to the largest network of traffic cameras. Accident? Injured? Get the video footage you need to get justice. 725 Cameras. LasVegasTrafficCameras.com. Our attorney, Ryan Helmick. Why is it so important to have an attorney in your corner? The state uh, of Nevada is represented by the prosecutor, who is an attorney. And so an individual that is charged with a crime should likewise be represented to level the playing field. And as well, you want to have somebody who has experience in dealing with these types of cases, knows what type of evidence that needs to be put forth, what type of story needs to be told to the jury in order for them to see all the facts and the circumstances surrounding the case. We have an officer basically around the neck area. To These two retired Vegas cops now podcast hosts. You know, they don't have ID. They can't get into a hotel room. To, to get them to help, them, especially if someone even gets arrested. A lot of people don't know how the justice system works. You guys have going on is necessary, it's needed. <laughs> hey, this is David Kohlmeyer, the problem solver. Thanks so much for joining us today. Today, I have my co host Danny Miner and Beja. Uh, we're talking today about a community problem in regards to a lot of people that have passed away um, due to COVID and what to do with person's assets or children that are involved. And today we have an attorney, Larissa, thanks so much for joining the show today. Hi, everybody. My name is Larissa Drahobitzer. I am a, an attorney in Las Vegas, Nevada, and I practice estate planning, probate, and I also do personal injury and wrongful death. So I wanted to bring Larissa on the show because she's an expert in regards to, you know, protecting your assets and your children. And a lot of things have taken place over the last, you know, year or two with COVID and a lot of people have been passing away and still, you know, it's a very sad situation. I wanted to talk about a little bit um, to help people in the community as a problem solver and a retired police officer. My goal is to, to give people referrals and resources like yourself that people can contact you if they have these problems. But tell us a little bit about some legal tips in regards to if a loved one or a spouse passes away, what are some legal tips that someone should be doing to protect themselves? Sure. So unfortunately, um, death is something that we're all going to experience, but a lot of people are very ill prepared. Um, for that major life event, um, whether it be because a spouse has passed away or, you know, um, another loved one. So um, I have noticed a drastic increase in um, my clients due to COVID as far as the estate planning and also um, a large number of probate cases, which are essentially cases that are initiated in court to transfer assets of a deceased person to their living heirs. And a lot of people are really confused about that process because there's no real resource that's available to the public that, you know, people can understand that the first steps to take in order to protect your family, which would be getting a sufficient estate plan with a will or a trust or a combination of the two, and also getting um, a health care directive and financial power of attorney if you become incapacitated or disabled. And you can provide those uh, resources. You said that you have a family wealth planning. Uh, yeah. Event. So what we do for, um, so yeah, that's the promotion for the watchers and listeners of the show is a family wealth planning session. And that is essentially a working meeting with me where we analyze your assets and your family dynamics. And we discuss a plan that would be appropriate for you personally that's customized so that you would make sure that your kids and your money and everything that you love and care about is protected if something happens to you, whether it be unfortunately death or like an accident or some unforeseen circumstance, you want to be prepared beforehand. So for everybody listening, 
they would just contact you? Well, they would, yeah, they could contact uh, Dave through the Las Vegas Legal Network, 844 Lawyers. Yes. So here's a question. Here's a question, and we'll go over that, the information you want to provide, you know, later in regards to resources that you want to give to help out people in the Clark County and the community. I guess let's just go backtrack. If someone, like, you know, we're in a home, and, you know, God forbid, when my father passes away in general, we're saying that there's not, we don't have really resources. Like, the government doesn't have resources really to help people in regards to, like, their assets and so on. Why do you feel that? Like, basically, you need to get an attorney in order to protect your assets. Why is it the government is not providing that for people in the community? Or is there such a thing That's or no? That's actually a good question. Well, I just think my honest opinion is maybe that's not on the top of the government's resources per se. Um, they've maybe felt that individuals should or could have that information. So I think that it's something that's not talked about enough and it's not common enough for people to understand. Like when you pass away, your bank account will be frozen. So if you are the breadwinner and you have the bank account and it's only in your name, well, you'd have to think if something happened to me, my wife, my other co-parent, my kids, like nobody can access that money. And like very few people know that, but that's just what happens right away. So the goal also is, I think the listeners of the show also should realize that I'm really big about prevention. So if you think that someone's going to pass away, right, we need to plan that stuff. Sad right. to say, a lot of people don't want to talk about death and certain cultures they don't want to talk about until something happens. But Some you want to be prepared a little bit regards to assets or money because let's just say that you're living with somebody and the the name of the money, the checking, is in the person's name. If, the, if that gets frozen, you have no money. Pretty much. Right? So you need, you need to prepare those things, right? If you're, bank, if you're married and the bank account doesn't have both of our names, Correct. their bank account will be frozen, right? Yes, the so, deceased person. So you may need to prepare that situation prior, right. and a lot of people just are not prepared, right? Um, it, there's a statistic that um, 60% of Americans over the age of 18 do not have an estate plan. So most people have nothing. But um, as far as what you were talking about, the prevention, I have a um, addition to that statement that, you shouldn't wait till you think you're going to pass away because a lot of deaths for people under the age of 50 are accidental. So you should really have those things prepared. And I've said like anybody over 18 can and should have an estate plan because it will work for you. If you're in the hospital, certain documents will allow somebody to make your decisions if you're incapacitated. But then like if you have a will that disposes of your assets when you pass and you can appoint guardians for your minor children in a will and you can also appoint those guardians through um, a kid's protection plan that I set up for my clients. But it's just good to have your plan together because then you can live your life more freely knowing that if something did happen, you have it all taken care of and you fulfilled your promise to the people that you love. Like, I didn't just die and then leave you a huge mess because right, right. coping with like legal issues, money, financial problems on top of grieving is exceptionally agonizing. Are there any... Um I think, you know, when you speak, you speak very intellectual. And I think a lot of people, they, they're they like, wow, this is like so much information. I mean, I think the goal is- I talk fast they, too. The goal is to get with you and to get an attorney. Don't be so intimidated by getting with an attorney. Right. A lot of people feel the way that I've met over the last seven years working in different law firms that they're intimidated and nervous to talk with an attorney where a lot of times they're providing like free consultations or free strategy sessions. Get with someone comfortable like yourself to, to go over your situation to see what you need to do pr- to be for prevention wise and to protect yourself. I mean, if you have assets or even children in general, um, when we come back, we're going to talk about protecting your money and your children. If something basically happens to you, if you, if you don't want the government to get involved, why you need to prepare a little bit more in general. I appreciate you coming on the show just to share with us because like we want to be educated. People need to be educated in general. So yes. when we come back for a quick commercial break, we will talk about that. So we'll be back in one minute. I want you to get the full picture of what happened. The real world is sometimes complicated and messy. And so can be criminal justice system. My name is Ryan Helmick. I'm a criminal defense lawyer here in Las Vegas. Hey, it's David Colmeyer. Welcome back to the Problem Solver Show. 
Danny, go for it. You got a question? Yeah, <laughs> I got a question. Attorney, I am a state employee. Uh, I worked for the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, so I moved to Vegas six years ago. When I retired from police work after 27 years, I had, uh, they had me fill out a paper that if I pass away, my pension's worth a certain amount of money. Like, I, I get money every month. At the end of the month, I get a check. Right. But if I die, that stops, and they give my family a lump sum of what that pension's going to be worth. So, Correct. So I, had a, I put down my kids, and I put my girlfriend down. My girlfriend's been with me 12 years. I believe she deserves something if I pass away. Uh, but I don't know. We're not married. I don't know if that would be a problem if I pass away. Do, would you recommend still putting that in a will also or just because I filled out a paperwork for the state? Yeah, that's such a good question. I okay. think you should put down me for the <laughs> for the will. No. Well, isn't it after seven years if you've been with somebody for seven years? Not Nevada. It's no common law in Nevada. Okay. So Nevada, you're like either legally married or not. But so that is a good question. And that leads me to um, inform everybody that assets can be owned in three ways. And so it could be jointly owned. It can be owned in your name only, or it can have a beneficiary. Okay. So on your retirement plan, there's a beneficiary designation. Yes. So by law, as soon as you pass away, everybody that you've listed on that paper will get the, the money because okay. that's who you've listed and it's a contract with the company. Okay. So that will not pass through the will if you have named beneficiaries. It will actually avoid probate and will not be subject to the will provisions. Okay. Um, the one thing I have to suggest to you, though, is that you mentioned that you had your children named as beneficiaries and I need to caution you that that is not a good idea to do, especially if the children are minors. And the reason is that minors cannot own anything. They cannot inherit money in their name until they turn 18. Yeah. So what happens in the real world, because I've had a case like this, I had some teenagers inherit their grandfather's IRA and it's a beneficiary designation asset. So it was it's like your retirement. Right. Right. So it was left to the minors and then grandpa dies and the financial institution will always require that a legal guardianship be set up. And that is another court case that has to happen in order to appoint a legal guardian for the children. Then the money gets blocked in, in a blocked account locked up until the children are 18. Okay. And then they get it all at once with no oversight or direction. So for a lot of people, when they have minors, they create trusts and they make the trust the beneficiary and that avoids the money having to go through the guardianship court. And then the money distributes according to the directions they leave in their trust. Okay. So your quick answer is that you did it right. Your girlfriend will get the money. Your kids will get the money. But if your kids are minors at the time, there will have to be another legal proceeding in order for them to even acquire that money. And then it won't distribute to them until they're 18 years old. But your girlfriend, it's not a problem that she's not married to you. But... Um, it, you always have to update those because if you end up breaking up with her or she passes before you She's or getting it, right? <laughs> something like that's who you've left it to. So you always want to make sure you're always checking your beneficiary designations to make sure you still have the right people on there. Awesome. Thank you. By the way, I think it's really important. Even myself as a retired police officer, um, I was actually medically retired and it's important when you fill out that paperwork as well. My situation was a little bit different. I chose to basically have my wife received money if i passed away on a yearly basis and you receive less money so it's not all at once correct so you have to and maybe it's something to get with larissa to say hey what should i do because there's so many options it's kind yes. of confusing and i think it, it was like from a to like i you know abcd and it was like yeah give money here give money there take money le like to get with you or a financial planner correct to make that right decision because right. it's important like him with lump sum i mean is it taxable is it not taxable right there's a lot of different rules regarding the employee uh benefits um, so your particular um, account or plan would have like an administrator on it and they would know all those rules. They're all different depending on the account type and things like that. But the, the moral of the story is the beneficiary designation will go to the people you list okay. and it will avoid probate and it will not be subject to the will. And you have to contact an attorney to get all of these things set in place, correct? Um, well, so with the... Form he filled out, I believe he got that from his job. Yeah. But an attorney will explain how to fill it out because I've had cases where people filled out their life insurance beneficiary paperwork wrong and all the money ends up going through probate 
meaning it's subject to creditors, attorney's fees, court costs, and it's a, mm -hmm. a huge delay on getting the money because they just didn't understand how to fill out the form. Understand. How does it work if there's no plan for someone? How do you protect your money, your, your children, you know, if something happens to you and you don't want the government to get involved, how does that work with you? That is such a good question because as I mentioned, most people do not have an estate plan or a will. So um, if, for example, you pass away and you have no plan, no will, nothing, um, then the state of Nevada and every other state in the country has laws that were created that says where your money goes. It's in a statute. And there's a list of priority over your heirs with surviving spouse having the highest priority than children. And then there's Home. And like, yeah, an ascending order, descending order of who has the highest priority. So the state will choose where your money goes. Even if you've never talked to this person, you've been legally separated. If you're not divorced, your surviving spouse can get the money. So if you want to um, take control over your assets and your children, naming guardians for them, having an estate plan would be appropriate. In regards to the children's situation, how does that work with the children? Like if you, just in children in general, like if you, if you didn't have like who, who the child should go to, if you're a single mother. To the government? I mean, basically, the, the well, government the, just the system? Uh, yeah, if there's no relative close, it will go into um, the system, foster system. But if you don't nominate guardians for your children, then anybody can petition to be their guardian. So it could be somebody raising your kid who you do not want to raise your kid. Why it's so important to take care of that prior. Wow. Exactly. So prevention. Important. Is that a simple form? Is that one form? So the guardian nomination is a simple form. We also put the nominations in a will and we do other um, planning for uh, guardianship, you know, leaving instruction on how your children should be raised and how much money they should get for their care. Okay, we're going to take a you know, quick commercial break, and when we come back, we're going to talk about why will is so important, which I want to know, you know more information. A lot of people are not educated about that, so we'll be right back. LasVegasTrafficCameras.com. 1725 cameras. Access to the largest network of traffic cameras. Accident? Injured? Get the video footage you need to get justice. 725 cameras. LasVegasTrafficCameras.com. Injured? Call 602 Hurt. Car accident. Call 602 Hurt Pacific West Injury Law, a firm that focuses on you. Our firm is dedicated to you and your recovery. No fee until we win. I think most people just don't know what nonprofits, what people are doing in the community to help people. So I want to bring that to light and um, share that information, you know, with the community. The average person just really needs help. I'm, I'm just trying to basically, you know, help people and go above and beyond. David Kohlmeier. 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 Hey, this is David Colmeyer, The Problem Solver. Welcome back from the break. Today, we're talking about a community problem in regards to people pass away, protection of their children and their assets. Again, Larissa, thanks so much for joining us as a local attorney, helping us understand this because it is a complex issue for most people in the community. Tell me a little bit, why is a will so important? People always talk about, like, do you have a will? Do, I don't have a will. Should I get a will? Everyone talks about, like, no one really gets it. So tell us, what is a will? Why is it easy to get in general? And why should people have it? Okay, great. So a will is a legal document that is uh, executed by a person prior to their death, and they will uh, mention how they want their assets distributed when they die and who will be in charge of their affairs when they die. So sometimes people die leaving loose ends. So a living person has to like, you know, uh, liquidate assets, pay creditors, you know, different things like that, lawsuits on behalf of the decedent. So um, in your will, you can pick the person who will do that, name the executor. And if you don't have the will, then um, your assets will distribute according to the state laws. And um, it can be a very contentious process if you don't choose 
who's going to get what or who will handle your affairs because a lot of people end up contesting a lot of things when a person hasn't chosen their wishes. So it creates a lot of conflicts in families, you know, due to mom said she was going to give me this or I'm going to get that or they're trying to do all these different things. So it really is just to prevent um, the mess that your family will have to clean up when you pass away. And what most people need to know is that the will still will go through probate court. There is a common misconception that if you have a will, you just need to show it to a financial institution or like a home buyer and that will transfer the asset to your name. But in reality, the court process of probate is required in order to actually get those assets from the deceased person's name into the living people's name. So if my somebody in my family passed away and they left a will and they left me a million dollars, I can't just go to the bank and get the million dollars with the will. It has to go through entire court process. And then at the end of that process, you get court paperwork to give to the bank to say, hey, like this is, I now can get the million dollars. And state by state is different with their laws. So right. with Nevada State, do you think you could just uh, summarize it real quick? Um, yeah. So the process is basically filing a petition, a court document to um, either prove a will if there's a last will or go under the state laws for distribution if there's no will. And an executor or administrator's named creditors are noticed through a publication in the newspaper. Creditors have a certain amount of days, depending on a lot of other factors, to file in claims into the case. And then essentially, once the creditors are paid the uh, and attorney's fees and last expenses, like funeral expenses can be reimbursed by an estate. So um, once all those things have been paid, then the heirs gets what's left over. So and, and then with going with you and having all of this planned, that all can be avoided or? Well, it can be avoided. It's still the same process, just. Oh, well, if a person ends up getting a trust and they fund their trust, then that will avoid that court process of probate. And I um, do trust. I do wills. Most of my estate plans have a combination of the two. And I do um, financial power of attorney, health care directives, kids protection plans. So, yeah, That's getting good. all your paperwork in order in the beginning, knowing that you have it. So if the unthinkable happens, that's oh, smoother. Yes, a lot smoother. You mentioned before when we met, um, you were on the show, I think almost about a year ago, is there a specific uh, celebrity story? I know you like talking about celebrities in regards to like why the will was important. Which was one of your favorite ones that if you don't want to mention a quick story about one of the celebrities, why the will was so important? Was it Marilyn Monroe? Was it? Well, the will was, okay, so there's one, um, Jim Morrison. Okay. He was lead singer of the Doors. <laughs> I do know a little bit about music. He died and he was not married to his long-term girlfriend. He was with a lady for serious, but never married. So he left a will and he left her his estate when he passed, which was millions of dollars. But the only problem with that was that she actually passed away before the assets could be distributed. So she never got the money. It was tied up and she had to resort to criminal activity while the probate was open to support herself. Oh that she was a recipient of millions of dollars, but because that court process of probate w was taking so long, mm -hmm. she was doing illegal things to get money and she was on drugs and she passed away prior to actually getting the money. So what's crazy is that she did not have a will. So the money that was due to her from Jim Morrison ended up going to her parents because she didn't have a will and under the state law, it wow. dropped down to her parents because she had no spouse and no kids. But then Jim Morrison's family sued and then they settled out of court. So it was so somebody what do getting... you want to happen to your money and oh, your my children money? and all of that? Well, <laughs> I did my own estate Take control. Plan. Yes, and I did mine. And I tell everybody, <laughs> do yours. And it just feels a lot better going on vacation knowing like... If I go zip lining and I don't make it, <laughs> yeah, everything is already established. Yeah, everything's fine. <laughs> it's a so, good thing to have, have everything planned out. And so one of the great things that Larissa is doing, I know that she is part of the Las Vegas Legal Network and one of the attorneys in the network. And then we work with the Las Vegas Legal Network because we want to have different attorneys available to also provide some free services, discounted services, uh, whether pro bono, contingency, you know, things that basically help people in the community. 
So one of the things that Delaris is doing is a family wealth planning session, which what is the value normally would you say that is if you went with that, an attorney? That's a $750 value because it's a two hour meeting where I sit down with the individual or the individual and their spouse if they have one. It's a one on one session. Uh huh. We It's one on one, two hours, and we go through all their assets. We go through their family dynamics and we determine the plan they want based on what the law is now. And if people don't have two hours, you have a monthly oh, yes. get-together? Yes, I have monthly seminars. Seminars. And um, they will be published on the um, Las Vegas Legal Network website. And they can also call the Las Vegas Legal Network at 844-LAWYERS to get the upcoming dates and times for my seminars. Perfect. Okay, so that's great. I really appreciate it. So again, one eight four four lawyers is the toll free number. Las Vegas Legal Network. You can click on, I believe it says events, and then Larissa's information for upcoming uh, future events of educational um, will be on there. And then if you need some help, um, again, if there's a specific legal issues, you can click on there. Right, if you want, you know, asset protection or will, and then we'll get the information to Larissa so that they can, you can, you guys can be contacted and get some help that you that you need. Don't be on your deathbed wondering where your stuff went to. <laughs> so Larissa thank you so much for being on the show again this definitely is a, a community problem in regards that the government really is not like helping you you right. need to be preventive you need to take a few extra take steps take action for your family for your assets for yourself like correct take your head out of the sand get the paperwork get with Larissa and again so it's Larissa Drohobitzer and she's available for anybody that needs some help and again, I really appreciate you coming on the show. Like I said, it is a community problem. As a problem solver, bringing on other attorneys and other people to help solve problems is the key. And and you, by providing an extra service for people in the community, I think is amazing. And I want to thank you for doing that for the listeners of The Problem Solver. Yes, awesome. thank you so much. Yeah, no thank problem. You. Anytime. So again, I'm David Coleman, The Problem Solver. If you have any type of problems whatsoever, anything small, big, large, anything that I can do to help, again, there's going to be a QR code on the screen. Uh, you can at any time scan it. The Problem Solver Vegas app will appear. You can add it to your phone, add it to your desktop. If you have a problem, please let us know. Thursdays at 4.30, if you go to YouTube or Facebook, The Problem Solver is a live podcast. And Tuesdays, as you know here, 6 o'clock, every single week, solving community problems with great attorneys like Larissa. And my co-hosts, I appreciate Danny and Beja for helping out Thank today. You. And Thank we will you. see you next week, and be safe. Our attorney, Ryan Helmick. Why is it so important to have an attorney in your corner? The state uh, of Nevada is represented by the prosecutor, who is an attorney. And so an individual that is charged with a crime should likewise be represented to level the playing field. And as well, you want to have somebody who has experience in dealing with these types of cases, knows what type of evidence that needs to be put forth, what type of story needs to be told to the jury in order for them to see all the facts and the circumstances surrounding the case.